Hello my soccer universe, let's summarize the action or let's look back at the action of Thursday evening. Uh, honestly, while I had some games on, I didn't really watch all that all that closely and in, in, in addition I had to turn off uh, sooner. But I took the time to watch all the highlights, so I'm uh, somewhat prepared and not unhappy. I think I can tell you a little uh, thing. Uh, one thing I usually like to do on European evenings is to see, you know, which leagues have been doing well, which leagues have been doing badly. Um, and while in the Champions League, I definitely could say it was a rough week for Spain uh, and, you know, uh, English teams doing well. Here it's a little bit harder because there are too many going on. And, you know, my focus is usually on the eight leagues that I'm covering. Um of course, the English teams have to, been doing all well. They all won they, and, and didn't even need to stretch themselves a whole lot. But, you know, it, it was uh, of different qualities. Um, if I look then, a German team is also looking good if it wasn't for Cologne in there. Uh, Italian teams, yeah, at least they haven't lost. <laughs> so, uh, Spanish teams, um, all rightish, I would say but not necessarily great, but, you know, all right, this too. And then I already come to the French teams. And for them, it was a pretty rough Thursday. Pretty rough Thursday for French teams. If it wasn't for the... And, you know, there are four French teams in uh, those two in, in those two Hong Kong competitions. If it wasn't for Stade Rennes already qualifying, all the other teams at times have got really embarrassing results in there. We're talking about Monaco losing big to Trabzonspor. Of course, we need to talk not losing at home to Freiburg. Although that uh, didn't surprise me all that much. We have to talk Nice losing at home to Slovatsko. Uh, it was really, really rough for the Liga teams. So, yeah. Uh, also, kind of a mix for Eredivisie uh, for Austria. It's another uh, league that I'm, of course, looking at. It was um, better than expected. However, it could have been a little bit better. But we'll see there that as well, at least there was a point in there. But you know, enough preamble. Uh, I would say we go through the games, otherwise the video getting uh, really, really long. We'll start way up north on the artificial turf in Bode, where Arsenal get a win through Saka, a really relatively weird goal, where I think the ball rebounds on his chest and into the net. But you know, job done, that's all that counts. I'm of course varying PSV, and a team that is flying relatively high against Zurich. They have battered them last week. They battered them this week. Even more so, uh, to the point where I was even wondering why this was one of the eight games uh, that they showed uh, on Austrian TV. And I was wondering, why are you even bothering to show that game? Because this can only go one way. And within 50 minutes, it was already two Gutierrez and Verman, uh, two nil and three nil, four nil. Verman and Gazi laid on five nil. So uh, out of destruction there. Fenerbahce also secured their spot in the next round thanks to a 2 1 over Larnaca. I think they were even down. And as I said, Stadren also secured their spot already in the next, next, next round by getting uh, the winning goal through Wu. Uh, but I have to say, uh, that was a fully deserved win by Stadren, especially based on the chances in the first first half. But late on, uh, Dynamo could have maybe gotten an equalizer. But I have to say, I'm a little bit disappointed by Dynamo. Uh, disappointment is also something I can say. Uh, on the game in general, I mean, this was the marquee game between Betis and Roma. I mean, uh, just when I look look at the coaches, Pellegrini versus Mourinho, uh, it couldn't be more Champions League level in 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 in, in a way, uh, and also the players. But the game was kind of odd. Uh, the goal through Canales to give Betis the lead was a deflection. The equalizer was nicely played, but also a little bit lucky because by. Uh, fractions of millimeters it was not offside but not against the equalizer and that was about that and the two teams agreed to on a draw uh, and Ludo Goretz get a, a win 2-0 over Helsinki if you have a chance watch that second goal because it, it is so odd how the one um, player is running free on goal uh, even rounds the goalkeeper and then it's kind of getting stuck until he uh, puts uh, assists the other, uh, another player to get it 2-0. It was a, was a really, really weird, weird one. One of the outstanding games of the evening was, of course, Union saint gilloise against Braga. This was kind of the top clash in that group. Those two teams have been winning their first two games. I think uh, Union even won them in Braga. So uh, it was very much staying in there for Braga. 
And they did. I mean, Vitinha scores the first half hat trick only for Boniface in between to equalize to 1 1. And you thought that Braga are really looking sharp and going for, for, for however, then in the first 15 minutes uh, plus. Uh, Union can equalize again when they are against Bo and Boniface again. Uh, very entertaining game. I would have loved to see that one live. I think this I would have this would have been edge of your seat stuff in in, in a way. And yeah, uh, neither of the teams qualify. I mean, Union with a win could have qualified uh, there. Leaves Braga and both still squarely in contention and as favors of moving on. However, also opening the door for Union Berlin, who thoroughly dominated Malmö but were so frustrated by the goalkeeper uh, that they just couldn't get past and it took in the last minute the penalty when they hit the post there were uh, saves in in there it was utter dumb dominance and again I think I've mentioned before I'm so happy that Union Berlin can play now in Europe at home in their home stadium the Alte Försterei uh, because it's such a unique ground how many stadiums in Europe have three sides standing room only it's it's a really unique ground, unique at, 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 at atmosphere and Union keep their hopes alive. They're now only a point behind Braga, which they play next next round. So that's definitely a really really big game uh, coming up for them. United utterly dominated Omonia. However, um, having many shots, however the quality of chances was a, a, almost a lackluster performance performance despite all the, all the dominance and when you just thought that Omonia get a, a draw out of that with uh, with only defending uh, McTominay in stoppage time scores the winner I feel a little bit for Omonia on that uh, on that one on the other side honestly uh, it was coming Real Sociedad also didn't have a big problem with Sheriff yes it was helped that Sheriff went down to 10 minutes in the 33rd and sort of just before the half uh, gets uh, the go ahead goal and, uh, and uh, Rico and Navarro make it a 3 0 scoreline. Uh, I think a scoreline also sends uh, Real Sociedad already through to the next round. No one is through to the next round in Group F. That group is all square, and what a crazy group! And I cannot even believe that uh, you know, after the first two matches, first you thought it is Sturm had a really good win over Midtjylland, then Lazio uh, battered Feyenoord uh, at home. And then it goes the other way. Midtjylland and completely better Lazio and Feyenoord roll over Sturm. And you just thought, oh, this is the turnaround. And now it's all ties. And it is basically the two teams, uh, the you know, the two teams that won on the first uh, match, they not played twice against the run, and then the two teams that uh, won the second match, they play against each other. And it's always and it's two two draws. Or in Lazio Sturm, was there was a nil nil in there. Absolutely crazy, crazy, crazy group where it's really hard to tell who is going forward uh, and onward there. Uh, the failed Midtjylland, I mean, Midtjylland took an early ur lead that was then uh, equalized by Timber. After the half, Hanko uh, gives Feyenoord the lead, however, Svechenko gets an equalizer and the game hangs in Bells. Feyenoord again cannot find a winner. I think between the two games that they had against Midtjylland, they should have won at least one. And they might rue that one. Uh, Lazio in the first half was clearly the better team over Sturm. Uh, even took them the lead through mobile penalty, hit the crossbar in between a few chances. However, Lazzari is getting sent off for a yellow red in a lengthy stoppage time, which was caused by loads of discussions, especially around that penalty call. And so Boeing manages to get an equalizer in the 56 minute. Then Sturm was the more dominant, dominant team, and uh, they concede. Just from a Calcatec uh, goal through Pedro, nicely assisted by Felipe Anderson. And yes, even with 10 men, I think Lazio have the better squad. Also, I have to say, the attendance figures in the Europa League uh, for Lazio, I mean, Lazio and Roma are have almost similar attention. I mean, Roma a bit more uh, as usual, but have similar attention figures in Serie A. However, the Lazio fans have only half the fans than the Roma fans in the Europa League. And I think it has to do that Roma fans are more fans from the city of Rome, whereas Lazio fans come more from the surroundings. And, you know, midweek, uh, it's not that easy, but it's still a, it was a remarkable thing. In any case, Sturm come back a second time and get a draw that overall was even deserved. But again, um, no one really can set them apart, set themselves apart in that group, which is definitely not true for Freiburg. Yes, they had luck. In the first half, I think Anand hit twice the woodwork uh, before Kübler makes it 1-0. 
but then Freiburg took over and had square control of that game um, and decided then lay, uh, lay, later on when uh, Gregorich came, came on, he immediately, with a, in really nice striker fashion, scores uh, the second goal that settled the game and then uh, lay, later on he got a route for not, which probably was not deserved through Schade and uh, Jong Wu Yong. Make it 4 0 in the same group. The only 0 0 of the evening with Karabakh and Olympiakos. The only thing I have to say, I have to look at those Karabakh jerseys again because they looked actually quite interesting. Ferenc Varos, after being better by uh, Germanas Vesda, come back with, with a win. And as we'll see, this is actually a big win for them in the Europa League. Uh, they had a 2 uh, a, a 1 0 lead, um, a goal then right after the half uh, through mid Mitrovic, but almost immediately then. Um, uh, so uh, a big win for Ferdinand Varos after being battered before and speaking of battered uh, Trabzonspor win the head to head against Monaco where they had such a lucky lead at the half because Monaco created many chances should have been up by one or two goals and then they score the oddest of own goals that you will ever see where Nübel he has the ball he wants to pass it out and hit Sar on the leg who kind of blocks the ball and goes into the absolute slapstick goal and then right after Vito Hugo and Pardi make it 3-0 uh, by the 57th minute and Therese Gay a little bit later adds a fourth one it's an absolute route for Monaco that no one saw coming to be honest so look at the Europa League standings uh, we have first group um, Arsenal m are taking almost through PSV also very much in the driver's seat uh, you see the two of them they will play each other relatively soon and they will have a double so maybe this gives Bode to maybe make up some ground on pro PSV uh, Fenerbahce start are already, already through Betis are also through it's now between Roma and Ludo Goretz and remember Ludo Goretz won the first leg that was in the first round so uh, but they better hold surf Roma Pro will win against Helsinki I would say Ludo Goretz will potentially lose to Betis although Betis will uh, save some players so it might come down to the last round there uh, a rather open group except for Malmes between Union saint uh, Braga and Union Berlin Union almost through but not quite uh, and Union also there uh, this will be very interesting who will go through in that uh, group Real Sotheby and Manchester United of course both of them are through uh, you know uh, technically Sheriff could catch uh, United but I don't see it happening like at all uh, the craziest group of course is group F we said already uh, at the moment is Feyenoord and Lazio still well as you would expect because they are uh, obviously the, the, the um, highest rate rated teams but it's such an odd group I mean after four matches having everyone at five points is rather rather remarkable and really look uh, look looking forward how this group will end um, Karabakh holding the advantage over Nantes uh, Freiburg already through so um, that might play a role as well and then the, the Ferenc Varos uh, that win was really big because this is another group that was really 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 tight and now you see uh, Jovenas Vesta or Red Star being actually outside looking but not out of it absolutely not out, 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 out of it but Ferenc Varos and Rapsonspor still uh, you know one and two at the moment so really really interesting group there as for the favorites for uh, the um, Europa League it's Arsenal and now Freiburg move ahead of Rasmus and Betis uh, but you know it's all very very tight there Sadren Manchester United and already Barcelona is in there if Barcelona should qualify I think they will go relatively near to the top but at the moment there's still a smidgen of a chance that they might not go uh, in there and there's also PSV and Ajax uh, not the bene so yeah uh, ne upcoming games we have already next week Arsenal against PSV I'm not quite sure that uh, I saw a kick of time at 7 I don't quite believe it that's why I put it at TBD uh, and that's why also Arsenal are not playing Manchester City at home which probably they won't be too unhappy uh, about and then a week later uh, return fixtures and like for the for, for the Champions League I won't be able to see these uh, probably because I'm uh, traveling but let's see how I will do with review videos I think I might be back by Friday or so let's let, let's see how it, how it goes in any case um, 
Er said the big one is probably Union Berlin against Braga on the first page, uh, beside PSVR, or something, which is the marquee fixture of the entire Europa League campaign, I would say. Uh, and then, you know, uh, everything. Lazio mit Jülern Sturm against Feyenoord, always good. Uh, Freiburg and North against Karabakh is a really, really big one. And then every, everything on the, the bottom two, I think Ferenc Varsch and Monaco will also be a pretty big one. Going over in the Conference League, uh, but actually a very easy over RFS, Fiorentina. That was a crazy opening uh, five minutes. Hearts f hit the post in the first minute, then in the second minute, uh, Fiorentina hit the post. Then from off a corner, Jovic takes it. Fiorentina again hit the wall, Wolfsburg, and then uh, Biragi, Gonzalez, and Barak makes it a 4 0 half lead. Biragi with a beautiful free kick. Uh, Humphreys pulls one back and then Gonzalez with a penalty makes it a 5 on scoreline, putting Fiorentina squarely into on pace to qualify. Uh, Schocker or the Silkeburg 5 0 at home against Stauer, also away from home. There was no odd expected. West Ham United, a very routine performance. Uh, he had a tunnel through Banerven Rama and Bowen, and only late on um, Anderlich could pull one back. Austria Vienna. And I know this, when first of all, the, the tragedy that well, one of their young stri strikers had a big accident just on the evening of that game, so that had an impact. In, in general, yes, uh, Villarreal overall the better team. Second half, Austria had some chances, but and at the, uh, at the danger of offending the whole fan base, they're a little bit too green uh, there. And if you have a chance, watch the winning goal through Jackson. Nice to see by Morales, but there were so many bounces going their, their way in that um, game. Uh, it was actually unbelievable. Um, Hapel Bergeva won uh, 1 against Lech Poznan, so uh, it's between those two, probably, who, who will finish second. Köln not looking good at all. Partisan beating and 2 0, and it was a actually deserved over, over, overall. Um, uh, Partisan even here hitting Woodwork game had, had had to be even interrupted. There were no Cologne fans there, but Partisan had had such a pyro show that it was so much fog that the uh, game had to had to be halted for 10 minutes. Uh, and then the shocker that Nice lose at home to Slovakia despite have, have, having a one lead with a very late free kick that honestly. Uh, the way the wall opens, it's like Moses part part you see and the ball goes into the internet. It's a real, real shocker. Shocker also, to, to be honest, uh, the way this uh, AZ uh, lost to Limoso because they were larger, but he had the better chances. Uh, but uh, Robert first in the first, first half has a great goal line safe, and then he scores even the go ahead, the go ahead and the end the end the winning goal. Not a big problem for AZ, but I think this is a game they probably should have gotten at least a draw out of, if not more. Vaduz can find an Ike Ike, Ike was and still concede a stoppage time goal uh, against Dnipro. So, you know, uh, I have seen that there, uh, where UEFA core coefficient is one of the best, uh, you know, for Liechtenstein is one of the best out, out there because they're only a single team. Yeah, I guess it's gonna fall. Dior Gardens really, really surprising everyone with a 4 to win or hand. They had a 4 0 lead by the 46th minute. Completely taking Gant apart and then, uh, you know, just hold, hold, hold back and they could pull back two goals, but it never got really exciting. Molde also needed to eventually break down Sham Shamrock Rovers, but got uh, that job done. And I really wonder what Sparta Prague is doing because uh, the the foul by Ola Jenka to give away the penalty was really stupid. Then uh, cannot really create any chances or, you know, are not very convincing and losing 2-0. This is a Slavia that actually was really uh, a stalwart of over the past few years. I guess their time is coming to an end. Balkany had a lead over Sivaspor, but just could not hold on to it. Sivaspor in the second half, too good. Turned the game, the game around. And then another really entertaining game between Slovan and Basel, where Basel had a 1 0 lead. Uh, however, Weiss and his father is the coach. Uh, I have such 2010 Weiss vibes because I think Slovakia, they were also the Weiss uh, player and Weiss coach, um, were playing together there. Uh, gets the equalizer after the half. Within a few minutes, they uh, Kutska and Kavric uh, give it, uh, Slovan a 3 1 lead, and Slovan had already won in Basel. However, Juf and Zekiri uh, get an equalizer, so keeping their hopes all uh, alive. And then 
If you ever see Harris of Shalgir is a Punic Ye Yerevan, that wet plastic pitch does not look good at all. So we have the standings, and again, it's the first four of our groups are a little bit more interesting than the other ones. Uh, Bajakshi is through, and Fiorentina more or less through as well, since our, our, our RFS didn't pick up too many points. Uh, West Ham already through, and Silkeborg is in advantage over Anderlecht. Villarreal already through, and the group winners. Uh, Austria have a chance, but it seems to be between Lech Posen and um, Hapel Beersheva. Partisan looking strong in their group. It's a f flip of a coin between Nice and Cologne, but don't underestimate Slovatsko. They have been really, really surprising me. They play quite, they, they play carefree in the um, uh, Conference League, and that is dangerous because it's really, really, really tight uh, there between those two. Um, AZ also should see the group out. Nipro is now in a good position to finish their second. Uh, Dior Gardens, I would not have expected that, but they seem to be winning their group ahead of Molde, so this is very much a Scandinavian group. Can Ghent come back? Gotta see. Uh, group G is another one that's wide open. I mean, we had no occlusion, Sivospor winning, but I don't see it. Uh, Slavia Prague, I don't want to count them out quite yet uh, if they get the results, and then Basel also. Should be in a clearer lead, I have a feeling, but you know, uh, it's the way it goes. I still think that uh, Slavia will go and let's see if Slovan can get the other one. Uh, as for favorites, Villarreal, however, West Ham are moving, 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 moving up. So uh, I find that in interesting. Then at Z, and then the rest is more or less also Rance, especially since Fiorentina is only a second spot and will have to play a Europa League team, which will not be easy for them. Speaking of Europa League teams, uh, the one that's really already on the horizon there is Union Berlin, but you know, let's wait and see. Upcoming rounds, we have Fiorentina against Bajakshia. This might be for potential first place, however, I don't think Fiorentina will win the head to head. Um, what else do, do we have? Um, nice against Power Parks and Slovak, we can call it. I, I said this, this is a really, really tight group there. Um, then Mold against New Gardens, of course, uh, the Nordic duel. And I think every, everything in this Slavia Praga Cluj uh, group is really in, in, interesting as well. So, you know, there are interesting ties in there, but they are not the top class ties that will get you towards the TV, I would say. In any case, I really hope that you enjoyed this video. Please drop a line below if you want to add something to whatever I have mentioned here. Whether you, if you've seen a game or whatever, I really, I really would like to hear from you. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel. If you want to see more videos like these, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there! I really hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel and hitting the little bell icon so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.